Thank you, Chairpersons. Thank you, Chetan, for uh, giving this opportunity to moderate this uh, session. Of course, molecular diagnosis is one of the uh, fast upcoming technology as the initial uh, introduction was given. Uh, uh, they have revolutionized the diagnosis of infectious diseases because there is a faster result, the better sensitivity and specificity compared to our cl uh, classical or conventional methods. Initially came as single test, a single PCR. Now they have come with the multiplex wherein in one go you can uh, diagnose many, look at many of the organisms. You can do what is called as a syndromic diagnosis. Not much of technical expertise is uh, needed, but the cost is a limiting factor as of now. As we keep doing, probably the cost may come down. So today's panel discussion, we are trying to look at what does it mean? Because we say PCR. What is PCR? Nobody knows. So what is PCR? How it is different from the uh, traditional methods? And what are the samples that you can send? What are the samples to be taken? And how do you interpret that? And especially when you get uh, two or three organisms in the same thing, uh, so what we are trying to do is uh, evidence-based uh, guidelines, evidence-based uh, answers, rationally we are trying to give it. When you come to the diagnosis of infectious disease, we have le several methods. We culture the organism, we do the stain, we look at the antigens, we look at the polysaccharide on the capsule, so many methods. But one thing is the unique heart of every organism is a DNA or a RNA. That is more specific. You take a piece of that, amplify it, then you try to study that particular part. So identification of the nucleic acid, it is unique. It is like what you call jatakam for a person. So it is unique for that organism. And uh, the thing is so successfully you have seen being implemented in the diagnosis of tuberculosis. Now the future is depending on these things because we are able to identify those organisms where hitherto we were not able to identify. For example, mycoplasma, for example, some of the viruses and the time taken you can see is very less compared to this. Whereas conventional culture at least you need at least 72 hours whereas here within half an hour or uh, one hour you can get. So what is PCR? PCR in simple words, it lets you pick the piece of DNA you are interested in and you can study as much as you want. It is a chemical process wherein you amplify the target nucleic, or, uh, uh, the nucleic acid and then you try to do it as much as copies as possible, something like a Xerox machine where you take more number of copies, you take the copies and try to study. And as I told initially, one target, now also if you want one specific organism, you have one target PCR, two target flu and uh, other things. The multiplex wherein are respiratory, whatever the common respiratory organisms you can try to look at. So there are various uh, methods. So having said that, let us go to some case scenarios where you can uh, know. So for, uh, the first case is 14-year-old boy with a high fever, headache, vomiting, altered sensorium, uh, came with breathlessness. He was intubated and ventilated. CT was normal, uh, treated with multiple antibiotics, uh, metronidazole, uh, meropinum, ceftriaxone, etc. Uh, low blood pressure was there, referred as a case of encephalitis and ARDS. The initial working diagnosis was severe pneumonia with the ARDS and encephalitis and uh, they continued the initial antibiotics and pending investigations. So at, uh, this is the X-ray which you can see, uh, looks like more of a ARDS and these are the few investigations. The CSF showed uh, more of lymphocytes and uh, glucose of 75. And we thought it is a viral meningoencephalitis or a partially treated bacterial meningitis. So with this scenario, if this case comes to you, sir, how will you proceed? 
because we need a etiological diagnosis now it is the era of microbiological diagnosis whether it is pcr or a culture so how will you do because multiple antibodies have been given and you are not able to look at the uh, isolate the organism dr reddy how you can uh... a very good morning sir at the outset, I thank AOP and the way this are for giving us the opportunity to be a panelist in this under the guidance of uh, ideal legendary figure, Sir Bhaskar Shanai, Sir. Thank you very much. So the first case, as we all know, 14 year old, we have typical uh, you know, CNS symptoms. Uh, so we have to various differential diagnosis comes. The basic investigations have been done and. Uh, even dengue is negative, malaria is negative, falciparum, CNS manifestations, renal and liver function tests are normal, and the X-ray is showing uh, ARDS picture, and CSF uh, also pointing out to more of uh, viral uh, meningoencephalitis. Or since the child is very sick and uh, referred the case, if the child might have received the antibiotics outside, and so it can still be a partially treated uh, bacterial meningitis. In this scenario. This is, we have to prove the bug. So otherwise, if we diagnose it is a bacterial meningitis, depending on the organism, we have to continue for seven days, 10 days, 14 days. The antibiotics, the higher antibiotics, like uh, uh, septriaxone and vancomycin. And we have to uh, delete or uh, rule out the viral meningitis. This is the scenario where we can really take the help of uh, uh, PCR, that's molecular diagnostics. So the PCR of CSF, CSF culture is we have a, a low, low yield, even the blood cultures will not give that uh, this thing, but high specificity and sensitivity comes when you send the CSF uh, sample for a PCR analysis. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Obel, you have given the answer. So here the role of a molecular diagnosis comes. We sent a CSF for a meningoencephalitis panel and to our utter surprise, it was streptococcus pneumoniae. Though the CSF culture didn't grow, of course, we expected that because of the uh, lot of antibodies. So it is ultimately a pneumococcal meningitis with the ARDS and septic shock. Antibiotics were de-escalated, vancomycin uh, and uh, ceprexone was continued, extubated and uh, was discharged well. So, sir, can you tell me a uh, brief about the that panel, meningoencephalitis panel, yes, uh, do you send uh, uh, very frequently or in such cases? Sir, in such cases when there is a dilemma and uh, when there are some even outbreaks, other things uh, uh, to limit the spread uh, to diagnose the etiological uh, agent. Uh, so we do send a ME panel, meningoencephalitis uh, panel, uh, biofilm array. So it covers various bacteria, virus, as well as some fungus what also. What is the role of uh, PCR in general, uh, where it helps? What are the other uses of PCR? The PCR definitely in the, uh, it helps in identifying the infectious uh, agent. So we have so many overlapping of the signs and symptoms of many diseases. And it's very useful in identifying the genes of uh, the antibiotics, mecha mechanism of resistance, and some cases, but the monitoring and the prognosis prognosis of the disease and the estimation of the viral loads like CMV and HIV, for infection control, for detection of MRSA, and uh, for outbreak investigation to prevent the, uh, to identify the bug as well as to uh, limit the spread of the bug in the community. And for knowing the various variants, now we have seen the various usefulness in COVID also and other uh, variants. Advantages? Uh, various advantages, as sir said, uh, it is very fast within now with the latest uh, advancement of technology, real-time PCRs, multiplex PCR, you can just, within one hour you can get the report and a shorter time to opti optimal therapy and uh, it improves the treatment decisions. We, uh, we can stop unnecessary using of the antibiotics as well as we can take the decisions to continue the antibiotics or to escalate the antibiotics because as we know in se severe septicemia and bacteremia, every hour delay will cause the increase in the mortality by 7.6 to 10 percent mm. and it really helps in support the antimicrobial stewardship and unnecessary testing and finally we may think that PCR is very costly but in spite of doing all the battery of investigations finally they were doing the PCR in wanted cases we really prove cost effective 
and uh, that's a very very ad uh, real advantage of yeah, PCR. Thank you, sir. Uh, you have uh, given the full uh, uh, details about that. The, so the it is not only for the diagnosis. There are much more other advantages, including the genes responsible for the I mean mechanism of resistance also can be uh, detected. So thank you, sir. Uh, the message from me is that. When you are not able to identify an organism, send the uh, PCR wherein you are able to uh, identify the organism and you are able to de-escalate the antibody. That is one of the other most important advantage of this particular technology. So let us go to second case. Uh, child uh, two and... Uh, the cost is an issue. The government set up like yes. mine. Okay. Absolutely. That's what we uh, told. Uh, Cost is an issue, but wherever uh, now most of the uh, patients who are coming to private uh, care, uh, they have yeah, insurance. So right. that is not they a. They have limited panels available over here, not validated though. But they include, you know, they're just three or four thousand uh, for the cost. Though not validated, but they do include the common organisms causing pyogenic. The advantage would be, you know, we, we can decide the number of days of giving antibiotics. Yeah. If the patient is not affording for that, yeah, five, yeah. especially if the clinical signs or the syndrome you suspect, so you can uh, narrow down the things. Yes, the second case, two and a half years with the fever, cough, fast breathing, had uh, res uh, respiratory distress. You can see the saturation was 88, and admitted in an outside hospital where the nasopharyngeal swab was uh, uh, sent for uh, uh, the PCR. They detected human metanumovirus. The child uh, worsened, so it was referred to our hospital uh, with the ceftriaxone, vanco, and linozolid. He was ventilated. So they thought it is due to metanumovirus, and then they sent to our hospital. So child didn't improve. Child worsened, sir. In this case, in your hospital, this child comes. How will you proceed? Do you want to do any other further investigations mm -hmm. or you are happy with the metanemovirus that you got some okay. Eureka, I got some virus? Uh, these PCR panels, upper activity panels, do pick up the uh, nosocomial infection, I mean the, the common common cells also. But human metanemovirus is one. There are three or four which if picked up, they are usually pathogenic. Adeno, uh, your human metanemo influenza, if they are picked up, they are usually pathogenic. So I'm still uh, sticking to the diagnosis of human metanemo. The only thing is the patient is deteriorating clinically, right? And it's a PICU patient. And the, the, in, the, in a PICU patient, one third of the patients might have uh, 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 mixed infections, mixed bacterial infections. The patient's not patient not improving, the general condition not improving. I still believe it is human metanemo, but it could be a mixed infection. I, I'd go for a uh, lower respiratory panel because the patient is in, uh, intubated, why not take a trachea respirator and uh, get an early Absolutely, you have given the right answer. Sir, uh, uh, this child was investigated. All the uh, routine investigations doesn't show much. This is the x-ray of the child. And uh, he was ventilated. And during the ventilation, we sent the tracheal aspirate for the thing. We didn't believe that only because it was a nasopharyngeal aspirate. We didn't give much importance to that. We went ahead with the tracheal aspirate. And tracheal aspirate showed streptococcus pneumoniae, the first one up, upper, in addition to metanemovirus. So metanemovirus was there, but the tracheal aspirate showed streptococcus pneumoniae. Now you have the answer. Antibiotic were de-escalated. And then uh, we continued for the uh, uh, full course and child is now uh, it's there in the hospital now and it is now shifted to the ward with a stable of course it is a uh, politician minister's grandchild uh, so <laughs> everyone was on the tip of the toe so sir as you told uh, the upper respiratory and lower respiratory you mentioned so what are the differences when you uh, choose these things and what are the advantages over the other or the, the specimen upper respiratory would give you, uh, we will take from the throat swab or a nasopharyngeal swab. Lower respiratory would be either a bronchiolar lavage or a sputum or a tracheal aspirate. So, uh, the multiplex of these things, uh, PCR, they can, uh, depending on the panel, uh, you can detect multiple viruses and one which is commonly done by uh, the film array uh, contains all these around 20 respiratory pathogens also can be done, but only thing is the cost is a limiting factor. These all viruses can be seen. The 
organisms like pertussis organisms mycoplasma chlamydia which cannot be detected by a typical i mean the conventional method can be detected about 20 organisms can be detected sir uh, uh, can you tell what are the various types of uh, pcrs that is available because just for the audience uh, uh, interest um, there are conventional pcr there are real time pcr which basically monitors the dna amplification in real time and it gives you faster results uh, like we uh, send it for tb like gene expert uh, then there are rt pcr for the <clears throat> it uh, from rna to dna it re by reverse tra transcriptase enzyme converts from RNA to DNA for especially for RNA viruses and there are multiplex species we are talking about biofire biofire the from the BSAF or from the other body fluids like uh, bronchiolular lavage yes sir there are many more terminologies which I don't want to confuse but these are the basic three four terminologies if you can remember that is more uh, enough more than enough but these have their own limitations because they can detect only the target which you are put it the predefined targets which are there only that it can unlike culture culture even if it is a rare organism you can detect but here what the whatever is a predefined or preloaded that only organisms can be detected resistant genes we told and it doesn't give antibiograms like uh, cultures and uh, some pathogens are colonizer it doesn't recognize between a colonizer and a pathogen for example step pneumonia in hib can be in the upper respiratory tract and it is a nucleic acid so it doesn't uh, differentiate between a dead and a living organism and it is not useful for the uh, detection of end of the treatment uh, also so these are the panels uh, which you can see the clinical performance if you look at the various uh, organisms they are around the sensitivity is around 98 and the specificity around 99 percent for all the organisms which you can see and this is a paper wherein they compared the uh, film array respiratory panel compared to the conventional methods wherein the standard and the film array on the other side that improved the detection by 15 percent whereas if it is a nasopharyngeal aspirate it improved the detection by 30 percent so detection rate is more important and if it is a more lower respiratory tract inversion like ball the uh, specificity and sensitivity increases so let us go to the third case uh, four month old uh, with the uh, uh, respiratory distress hepatosplenomegaly mother had tb and we suspected miliary uh, uh, tuberculosis of course as the standard protocol we sent uh, cb natin afv for staining this is the picture and this end of the treatment the uh, miliary tuberculosis and we sent a gene expert wherein uh, the uh, ball was taken and it showed uh, even the afv was positive and uh, cb net was positive and LPA was also sent and LPA uh, gene experts showed rifampicin resistance of course and this showed rifampicin sensitive the LPA showed so now I want to ask you sir what are the uh, Devesh what are the advantages and this uh, in uh, TB diagnosis role of PCR yes sir so yesterday uh, sir has opened part uh, regarding C now briefly you tell yeah so basically uh, cbnet uh, it is uh, going to give you result very fast sir. it is automated you have to just load and within 45 or 2 hours you'll get the result in lpa you have to do many things manually so it will take longer time it is little bit expensive so not everywhere available the advantage of lpa over cbnet is uh, that in cbnet we can only see for rifampicin resistance but in case of LPA, along with rifampicin, we can also look for isoniazide and second line uh, antibiotic as well, sir. Uh, now, regarding the discrepancy in uh, uh, CBNAT report and LPA, so, sir, when there is very low viral load, there are chances that CBNAT can have false uh, positive for rifampicin resistant genes. I'll come to so, that. Sir, so, uh, he has clearly told what are the advantages of that. But now I am uh, surprised. Though they say uh, PCR is a uh, final or uh, 
the best method. Here we have used PCR. In PBNAT, it has come as rifampicin resistance. And LPA, it is rifampicin sensitive. How will you explain that? Uh, so, so it is uh, uh, observed that when there is very low viral bacterial load, there are chances that uh, CBNAT can pick up false resistant in the form pacing resistant. So uh, even in our NTEP guideline also they have mentioned and there are a number of publication which suggest the same thing that if you are finding reform pacing resistant in CBNAT with very low uh, bacterial load, you should also correlate with clinically. If there is no signs, there is no exposure of MDR, TB, child is responding well and you are not suspecting that this child is having reform pacing resistant, then you'll always ask for LPA and uh, uh, MGIT, which is a liquid media. And what is the final report from LP and MJ you should consider rather than just relying on. Uh... Yeah, absolutely. So the other advantage is that it helps to differentiate between CAT, G, and INHA uh, mutations for INH resistance. Wherein, if you are able to detect that, if it is CAT, G, you cannot increase the INH dose, which will not be helpful. Whereas if it is INH air mutation, higher dose of INH will definitely help it. So that is the advantage of uh, rationalizing or streamlining this uh, antibody. So the PCR role comes here and we are used to only the rifampicin uh, resistance, but now with the LPA, you can look at more uh, resistance organ, but there is no genotypic test at present for ethambutal and pyrazinamide. It is for other things which you have already told. So uh, it is one is the reason is uh, the low bacterial load in the sample. There are some silent mutations. That's what they uh, describe. So current guidelines, if you are able to see uh, the uh, rifampicin resistance, which is inter uh, indeterminate by CBNAT, we should always go for LPA. That is the message. These are the differences so why between. Why not repeat the... a CBNET? Pardon, sir. Why not repeat a CBNET? Intermediate. Yeah, repeating CBNET also uh, has been advocated by some agencies, but LPA is the best thing because so, you will look at more number of uh, drugs for which uh, resistance can be found out. Uh, so these are the few papers that uh, Devesh was mentioning, uh, which has given clearly about uh, these things. Let us go to the uh, fourth case, sir, it is a PICU case, so you are the best person to take it. Uh, fever, four days, sick child on uh, norepinephrine ventilator, culture grew gram-negative bacteria, uh, E. coli, which is carbapenem resistance, that is CRA. So, uh, what will you do, sir, in such cases? Um. Uh, if we have a uh, availability of biofire respiratory panel with uh, with a resistance pattern of the genes, then we can go for that. That will give you uh, whether the uh, CRE carbapenem resistant is because of carbapenemase or uh, other mechanisms. And if it is, uh, if it shows the, uh, if it is octa, there are several different classes of carbapenemase like uh, A, B, C, and D, and then. If it is in India, it's mostly OXA48 and uh, NDM or uh, uh, MBL resistance, metal beta lactamase. So uh, if it is OXA48, we can give a newer uh, BLA, uh, beta lactam BLI like uh, septazidim avivactam. And uh, if it is new uh, daily met uh, metallos enzyme, then it's uh, we can add STONM. Absolutely. But if we don't have any of this uh, availability of this enzyme resistance pattern, then we can just go empirically with polymyxin B. Uh, polymyxin which, uh, and if uh, if it is a urosepsis like UTI related sepsis, then polystin is a drug of choice. And if, the, if we are suspecting intra-abdominal infections, a skin soft tissue infection, we can add TG cycling. And uh, uh, sometimes prolonged meropenem infusion in addition to this uh, polymyxin also helpful. You have something to say, sir? TK cycling, usually the setup is usually a web is what we, uh, you know, face yeah. with. Uh, with uh, no, with here, the, what I'm stuff. trying so to tell TK you is that... may not work in See, the in lung. such cases, uh, they, people use empirically. But if you have a molecular diagnosis, you can 
target that was the message how we wanted to give now yeah. can we uh, diagnose in our practice yes there are uh, various methods of diagnosis of uh, uh, these resistance patterns one which we do is a uh, expert carba r because it depends on the it is based on the amber classification of cre i will not go into the details uh, it is uh, uh, like this and based on that this is the uh, a paper from journal of pediatric infectious disease society and it uh, clearly gives which antibiotics to be used when you have that particular type of mutation to that particular bacteria so this particular uh, test can be actually uh, we do routinely in our hospital and of course as you told it may not be available in many of the hospitals and uh, it detects uh, it is uh, performed on enterobacteriaceae pseudomonas and uh, acinetobacter it tries to define the type of carbapenemase because the drug changes but the thing is that it detects only five genes as of now probably over a period of time we are able to detect there are hundreds of genes but uh, defective genes but only five that is kpc ndm vim uh, imp and uh, oxa 48 can and it gives result within uh, 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 faster result of course the cost in our hospital is around 2000 uh, or 2500 not a very costly affair compared to the uh, the results that we give and here devesh uh, this child got carba r a report now ndm is detected how will you proceed yes sir uh, sir i'll just take a few brief uh, seconds uh, first of all to treat carba r enterobacteria see it, if you are knowing few basic it is very easy to handle this bug uh, to know the resistant mechanism so we all know about penicillinase and esbli so they are basically enzyme pro, uh, present in this cell so similarly, I am talking about enterobacteria, see, not other gram negative organism. So what happened? Penicillinase is also an enzyme which is present in these cells. So whenever there is penicillin antibiotic is available, this enzyme is going to destroy it and it is not giving opportunity to, to neutralize the bacteria. So now to do this uh, carbartase is a classical example of molecular study to identify the drug sensitivity. So what we are going to do, we are going to uh, look for the most important gene. As I told, there are more than 100 of genes responsible for carbapenem maize production. But these are the five most common enzyme uh, genes which produce carbapenem uh, enzyme um, in more than 1995. So what drug you will give now for this yes, NDM sir. detected child? Yes, sir. So this NDM is the most common organism in India and it is a metallobitalectomase. So uh, we have only few options available in India. Only ceftazime, abivectum, along with estrionam, we can give. Both you have to. So if you look test. at the chart, uh, see uh, NDM. You the best drug would be cefetracol, but which is not available in India. So for that we give ceftazidime, abivectum, and estrionam. That combination uh, yes, works sir, yes, good. Sir. Yes. And merovirobactam, few centers are available. So no? this is the uh, other. I mean, other choice of antibiotics. How can and we had the opportunity of publishing this paper with the Devesh and uh, uh, the prevalence of carbapenem resistance uh, uh, in our hospital and which is uh, uh, accepted by uh, European Medical Journal. Devesh is a part of this uh, study. And the uh, next uh, case, uh, uh, we will go uh, because time is very short. Uh, they are very stingy about the times. <laughs> <So> <laughs> The so next case, three year um, uh, child, fever of three weeks, headache, treated with the multiple antibiotics. And uh, this child provisional diagnosis was query ADAM, uh, query TBM. So what are the management plans, sir? Uh, a prolonged acute uh, CNS infection first would, would be an MRI, mm. MRI brain with contrast. So this MRI brain showed a large uh, abscess in the temporal uh, area with midline shift started on uh, ceftriaxone and uh, metronidazole vancomycin. Cultures were stable, uh, I mean uh, normal, sterile. And after seven days, again, he developed uh, uh, this thing. And MRI brain was taken and you can see the large abscesses here. Uh, what are we dealing? How can you 
get into the etiological diagnosis. That is my question now. Now I can't beat around the bush because it's a very serious case. So any newer technologies wherein you can uh, take some help to improve the outcome of the patient. Anybody? First culture is negative and uh, the routine PS PCR panels are, have a very limited uh, area of uh, the organisms that, that we target. So I need something that gives me pan bacterial etiology, right? And the newer test they call it is, is the 16S RNA uh, sequencing that can be done in a, in a negative pus cul uh, culture or a culture which, not, which, no, which does not give you a phenotypic uh, classification wherein we can use a 16S RNA DNA sequencing is the newer technology. Can you briefly, just two sentences, what is it? Because audience, uh, though it is not available uh, freely now, but it likely to come in some years. It so is, let us... Uh, 16S RNA is, gene is a part of the bacterial gene. Classical characteristic that is useful for us is it is this this gene is present in all species of bacteria number one number two uh, it is very specific it is species specific this gene and the size of the gene is large enough for the study that's why we can use the 16s rna gene to pick up uh, pinpoint the uh, the etiology of the bacteria what we do is extract the bacteria uh, extract the gene uh, amplify the 16s rna uh, uh, portion sequence it and then compare it with the gene bank will get the etiology. Absolutely. So, this particular child, uh, we could uh, detect streptococcus intermediates and then uh, it was uh, treated uh, with the ceftriaxone and he improved. I am little uh, hurrying because of the time. So, uh, that is one techno, uh, sir, yeah. Ah, yeah, that is one thing in uh, blood culture positive uh, cases. Our culture for positive or undefined case. blood culture where the blood culture is not phenotypically uh, able to detect the organism. Yeah, when the blood culture is inconclusive rather than and, negative. Yeah. And one more thing in 16 year uh, our RNA, there are also chances that it get uh, contaminated from the environment. So it is always better if you are doing 16 hour RNA to do from sterile fluid that CSF. Because if you done from some, uh, okay. okay, there are chances of false. Yeah, thank you. Uh, last case, uh, one and a half year old, uh, fever, left focal convulsion, altered sensorium and uh, no meningeal signs, CSF normal. MRI showed hyperdensities in the right temporal, parietal uh, and bilateral frontal and occipital lobes with the bilateral temporal hemorrhage. EG is splits. So, sir, how will you manage? So this is a basically acute viral encephalitis, MRI picture and EG is uh, consistent with HSV encephalitis. Plates uh, are quite uh, specific, not uh, always, but usually in uh, clinical picture, I think it reflects uh, HSV encephalitis. So what are and the typical uh, CSF findings that you see in uh, 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 HSV? Usually you have a hemorrhagic encephalitis. So uh, there are RBCs in the CSF plus leocytosis with lymphocytic predominance and the sugar is usually normal. Proteins may be uh, mildly elevated but not very high. And sometimes it may be so no initially normal it may also. Be normal, yes. So confirmation is by uh, Dr. Obel, how will you confirm uh, this? Uh, now you have suspected because PLETS is there. The MRI shows yes. CSF is not very uh, uh, classical. Yes. So this is the situation again, our uh, molecular diagnostics really help us. If you send a CSF uh, panel, MU panel, we will find the uh, organisms and uh, we can be definite in finding out the diagnosis where we can de-escalate the antibiotics or we can choose right antiviral drugs. Uh, in order to cure this uh, this thing. So here, uh, uh, PCR was positive, HSV1 treated with the SI clovir. And the thing is that uh, it is a 98% sensitive and 94% specific. But false negatives can occur, especially if uh, there is a low viral load or if it is done in the early part, that is day one, day two. Sometimes it can be negative. So in that case, if you have a strong suspicion of HSV encephalitis, especially a clinical picture, especially a EEG picture of plates, especially a MRI picture showing uh, what we have showed typically, then if you have a strong clinical suspicion, you go for uh, repeat CSF 
HSV. So that will definitely uh, give, and of course we have spoken about the advantages. Limitations is that CSF, uh, it doesn't, CSF PCR, I'm not talking about HSV PCR, uh, in general, it doesn't detect JE, rickettsia, dengue, TB, and uh, some of the other viruses. And we have to, uh, we can keep it under refrigeration for uh, seven days, up to seven days, and we should not centrifuge, that one thing we have to remember. And this is the panel which you generally uh, see, the volume required is very less. And these are the few guidelines, European Society of uh, Clinical Microbiology and ID guidelines. Now the question comes, we talk about syndromic diagnosis, syndromic diagnosis. What do you mean by syndromic diagnosis? Anybody can answer. No. Yes, together what we used to do is just give a, uh, a syndromic diagnosis, say the patient is having right upper zone pneumonia, but the etiological diagnosis, pneumococcal pneumonia or this, you know, that, that we were missing till now, this PCR and these molecular uh, diagnostic tests, now uh, we, we, we uh, move from a, a probable diagnosis to a pinpoint diagnosis. Yeah, that means there are multiple symptoms can be uh, mimicking, uh, caused by one virus or multiple viruses or bacteria or organisms can cause a single kind of uh, picture. So that is very difficult uh, uh, to uh, microbiology diagnose. So that time we do syndromic diagnosis. This is how the syndromic approach goes. For, I will give some examples of syndromic. For example, these are the four x-rays where they all have alveolar infiltrates. Maybe the age is different. but the clean x-ray pictures are same. But when you do the etiological diagnosis, one is rhinovirus, the other one is meta, other one is EV, other one is adeno. So various organisms can cause similar picture. So you are trying to differentiate. So to, uh, we have come to the so answer. Last two, three minutes. No, I am in the end, I am in the conclusion. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, as we discussed, the molecular platforms are available for uh, uh, rapid diagnosis. It definitely has a curve on uh, antibiotic misuse. It limits the antiviral use also and it limits the unnecessary investigations in other setups and it helps in the management of high-risk patients and prevents the outbreak, reduces the hospital stay. Early diagnosis, mortality and morbidity can be less and they are a real boon and the thing is that we should know the limitations. This is an interesting article that I could read. Is it time to substitute culture with the molecular diagnosis for infectious disease? Not yet. Culture is culture. It will be there. It has to be there. Along with that, Whenever there are culture negative things, we may have to substitute. So now the points that we learned from each of the cases is that when you do the PCR, it helps you helped in the etiological diagnosis. It helped us to know what is the right sample that has to be taken, whether it is upper or lower. It helped us to know the antibiotic resistance pattern so that we could give a targeted therapy and the patient who was very sick and improved. So these are the messages that we were trying to give from this panel. Thank you panelist for uh, a wonderful job. And uh, my own student Devesh is there who did fellowship under me and he's in Ahmedabad. So uh, it is still a uh, good uh, opportunity for me. Uh, to encourage the young IDs to come up. So if you ask me right questions, I have some good answers. Thank you so much. These PCR panels and panel discussions, whether you like them or not, they are the flavor of the day. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, sir, for simplifying this complex molecular testing. Sir has one minute. Yeah. Mike, Mike. So, so 
what we are doing in practice and uh, in pyma fluid sending in the as ball sent for as pneumonia panel and uh, we are growing i always having some bug and that's in and out of three cases two then i had a talk with the biomed i discussed with several published all over the world that people have done this to god <laughs> so we are not the only one yes, <laughs> and that that okay because many a times you see you are giving high end antibiotics <coughs> to a sick patient and you feel how long can i give it and in that situation do uh, this jugad and you find a bug and streptococcus pneumon you are very sure that you can get away only with one, one antibiotic and we did in two patient and uh, success that yes sir and biomarriage people told me they say said they are also doing a study now after realizing this the people have done on those the similar thing we have done in our center also uh, the few things sir uh, sr also told that biofire cost somewhere 12 to 15000 and fewer local available which are causing 3 to 4000 the only problem uh, only multiplex uh, pcr which is fd approved is biofire so if you are practicing evidence based and if you want to uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 biofire but the another thing that biofire they are asking to do particular kind of particular sample only because they have that data only if you request microbiologist and they are they ready to do you can get it but the thing is it is not approved for i think we have to write ball and send but we are doing and it is come out to be positive that's the reason i raised i told you not validated yeah yeah exactly sir i think it should be validated should be validated and other thing is you said uh, you, i think enco plus hmm the antibiotics no no it was given uh, then we can, when it came to us uh, it was Thank I you thank so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all panelists. Thank Dr. Bhaskar.